Hey friends, all right, welcome to Power Apps YAML Tips. Uh, in this tip, it's about saving the future you and really anyone that's using your snippets uh, from that moment of panic when you go paste a gallery into a new app from a YAML snippet and think, hey, this thing is totally busted. By hard coding some sample data directly into your gallery snippet, you're gonna make sure that the layout shows up as someone wants it to look like. So if you put a lot of work effort into making it designed great, it's gonna look like that as soon as they paste it. They're not gonna to have to follow some yellow brick road to make it work, right? Now you can always swap out the data later, uh, but the trick, make sure that your snippet looks polished immediately and is way less confusing to others. So let me show you how easy it is to pull off. All right, before we get into it, let me just tell you a little bit about me. My name is David Warner. I work at Quisitive and I'm a Microsoft MVP and a Microsoft Certified Trainer, which basically means I love talking about this stuff a lot. So if you'd like to see more of what I do, you can check out my site at warner.digital or come connect with me on LinkedIn. Let's collaborate. I'm always looking to share ideas, updates, and I'm probably gonna share way too many purple and heart emojis. Aww. Yep, that's right, I love the sound effects too. And hey, if you find this video helpful or even mildly entertaining, tap that subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up, and let me know in the comments how you're planning to use what you learned. I genuinely love hearing and collaborating with other developers that are putting some of these things into action. And hey, by the way, I run a newsletter where I kind of round out some tips and information around other Microsoft 360 and Power Platform news and content in one easy, not spammy email. So I'll include a link in the chat. All right, if you're not familiar with YAML snippets and Power Apps, they basically let you copy and reuse entire controls in clean, readable code. It's super, super handy. Now, I go into more detail on how they work in the very first video of this series, which I'll link out for you. So if you're new to them, you might wanna check out that first. Otherwise, let's get to the tip. There are a couple reasons why this technique is worth using. Now first, it keeps your gallery layout from looking broken when someone pastes the snippet into a new app. They see a working design right away even though it's not using dynamic live connected data. Second, that clarity helps others understand what your layout is doing. It's a simple move that instantly makes your snippet more useful and way less confusing. Think of this as like travel insurance for your gallery layout, right? It's traveling between apps, except it's free and actually useful. The hard-coded data means your design shows up the way you intended, even without a connected data source. So let's see it in action in this demo. All right, so in this particular tip, what we're gonna do is focus on using a gallery snippet. So the intent is making the gallery full functional, right? Galleries are oftentimes and obviously based on data. So I've set up a simple gallery here. It shows some Lego sets uh, that I like, and it's very basic, right? So when I go in and I edit the gallery, uh, we see I've got my title, uh, I've got my description, and I got my image, right? So pretty basic stuff. Now, the key point here, of course, is that all of this is tied to a data set. Uh, so when I come up here and look at my items, right, it's tied to something called Lego sets. And of course, if I go over to data, we can see in this case, I'm just simply using uh, an import from Excel. Now this could be SharePoint, in all practicality, it should be something much more robust, uh, like SharePoint, like uh, like um, SQL Server, or of course Dataverse makes a great example here. Uh, but by and large, we're not always going to use an Excel uh, spreadsheet as the data source. But in this case, it is. It is perfectly fine working as a data source. Now the problem is that while I can come in here and I can view the code. And of course, we see that my reference to my data set is right there. That's perfectly fine, everything's working. If I click copy code, it works, that's fine. Now I come over to a blank app and I paste, right? Of course, this is all happening by default. Well, everything is still there, right? We see our label, our description, our title, our image, etc. It's all fine, but it looks broken. And so in reality, if someone is going to utilize this, if you're going to create a library of these things, which you should, it's very valuable to be able to create an asset library of these, you want it to be fully functional. You don't want the experience to be broken and then have someone to have to go say, well, let me read all the user guides around it, which you should create for anyways, let's be honest, but people don't, right? <laughs> they just say, I'm gonna use it. And they go use it and then they see all these red X's and they think, okay, it's broken. And they may not necessarily even know that, oh, okay, this was referencing a data set that I have to go find. It just simply looks broken. So let's delete that. Let's go back over and look at what the solution is. So I've got my second demo here on my screen. Looks identical, right? When I come in here, I still see my description and my title and my image, and those are still mapping uh, perfectly to the information that I want, right? Great, but watch what happens if I now copy this, and I could copy, it's all one thing. If I were to copy here, then it pulls out the YAML and that's fine. But if I come into view code, well now what's happening? 
we see a little bit more data. I'll come back to that, but I do just want to show you the wow factor. So I'm going to click copy code. I'm going to come over to here and I'm going to paste. All right, everything is working now. It looks great. Of course, I've kind of tipped my hat to what's going on. So how did I make this work? Well, the key is that instead of having the data set just simply being referenced in my items property, like we see here in the original one, right? If I open up the original demo and click on that gallery, I'm referencing that data set. Now, what I'm doing in this second demo is I'm including hard-coded data. What's the benefit? Well, it, it's just simply hard-coded data so that when the asset, uh, in this case, which is a gallery, is being deployed, we can see the data is already baked into it, which is super valuable. Now, do we expect whoever is going to use this to be using this data? No, in all practicality, probably not. And if they're planning on using the gallery connected to a data set that's already existing, then yeah, maybe it's fine for you to leave in the original connection to the original data set. But if you're building some really cool, stunning galleries, and this one's very simple, it's meant to be simple for the intent of the benefit of the tip, but you want it to be a good experience when someone goes and uses your snippet, uh, your YAML snippet. So in this case, when they came over into a brand new app and pasted it, everything looked great, right? It's working, there's no confusion, there's no red Xs, it doesn't appear to be broken. If this was much more beautiful, which we'll eventually move into in these tips, it will work as well, right? So really cool tip, very simple to implement uh, in all practicality. You just want to go grab some of your data. And in this case, all I've simply done is created a few records inside of uh, the brackets there that emulate what would be a table, right? So when I click in here, you can see that it thinks it's a table and it is completely copy and pasteable. So very useful. Uh, hopefully you gained something from this tip. Please go use it, start creating those libraries uh, and check out more and let me know what you think in the comments, uh, how you're using it, we'd love to hear more. Okay, thanks everybody. Before we wrap up, let me show you one more amazing power move. There is a Microsoft 365 and Power Platform community GitHub repo where you can browse, use, and even contribute back to a number of snippets for free. Seriously, free, as in zero dollars, cost you nothing. You absolutely can use them infinitely. And when you contribute back, say for example, you create your own snippet and give it back to the community, you don't just get those warm, fuzzy feelings. Oh. Although, hey, those are good too, but you can actually earn credly badges like you see here, snippet source or power contributor or community contributor. Now these are great for your blog, for your resume, for LinkedIn, show them to your manager, show them to your clients because they prove that you are contributing to the community and you are making a difference for the entire global community. And hey, send it to mom. She might not know what a YAML snippet is, but she'll know you're awesome. The links are here on the screen. I'll include them in the YouTube video description. So please get involved, check them out.